Hey, everybody. We'll get started in just a minute. Ay, ¿cómo estás? Como decir no a la jefa. ¿Tiene experiencia en eso? Diciendo no a la jefa. Es difícil. Sí. Es difícil. Um, depende. Es que sí. cuando se nos ponen entre la espalda y la pared, es difícil. ¿Por qué? No puedo decir no, no sé. Uh -huh. <ríe> qué bruta. Me clave trabajar. All right, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, this is the December 15th, 2021 meeting of the Planning Advisory Committee. This is a committee that provides technical advice to the City Planning Commission. Um, <clears throat> uh, the order of business will be roll call, presentation of items, questions from members, then we will take a short recess uh, to, re, uh, to collect any public comments that may come in, come back, and we will vote on the matters uh, on the agenda. And do a quick roll call. City Planning Commission is here. Uh, property management. Here. Uh, we have Department of Public Works. Here. Here. HDLC. Here. Parks and Parkways. Here. Sewage and Water Board. Here. And uh, we have um, perhaps not an official member of the committee, but we have um, the city's um, IT department. I'm here. Chris Ard. And do we have someone from 911 here today? All right. Well, they might be joining us later. And is there any departments here that I uh, did not mention? All right. First item then <clears throat> is going to be a request by Amy Scandliato to donate a portion of ground to be dedicated to the public use as a continuation of Mark Drive, located in the third municipal district, Donna Villa subdivision, square O, bounded by Pickerson Street, Dwyer Road, Hammond Street, and Peralt Walk to the city of New Orleans. The municipal address of the property uh, is 41611 Dwyer Road, and this relates to subdivision docket 7321. And uh, we have Rachel Berg from the City Planning Commission who handled the, the subdivision on the call as well. Um, Jennifer, would we like to start with you or would we like to start with uh, Ms. Amy? Uh, we can start with Amy, that's fine. All right, Amy, um, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and uh, just uh, give a little explanation of uh, the proposal today. Okay, yes. Yeah. So my name is Amy Scandaliato, and I'm, I'm the owner of this property that um, we're talking about. So um, this was one big um, plot of land, 
and um, I guess maybe about six months ago, five months ago, something like that, the Department of Public Works, I guess, hired um, Pomizano Construction. They had entered into a contract with them to pay, repave the entire Mark Drive. Well, that also included paving through my property all the way to the canal. So it kind of basically cut my property in half because of this new street that they put in. So I feel like, well, since, you know, the city of New Orleans is paying for this and doing all this work, I feel like, you know, it's the right thing to do to, to go ahead and dedicate the property to the city of New Orleans so that everybody, you know, at least everybody on that street and anybody that comes in and out, you know, is able to use that um, as part of the public right away in the public street. So that's my intentions is to dedicate that that new extension of Mark Drive to the city of New Orleans. All right. And Amy, does that connect to Royer Road? No, it does not connect. No, okay. None of the streets, I mean, I, I shouldn't say none, um, but the streets from Peralt Walk, basically all the way to um, the street before Reed, I can't think, I think it's Redwood. None of those streets go all the way through. They all dead end at the canal, every one of them. Okay, thank you. So that's a normal, that's a normal situation out there. It's not, this isn't anything unique to this area. All of those lots dead end at the Dwyer Canal. All right, any questions or comments from members of the committee? Uh, so this is Jen, hi. Um, uh, I just want to note that as far as the subdivision docket and the donation go, um, uh, tax clearance is required. Um, and I know there's a, still an issue outstanding with that. We will not be able to, to um, move the real estate transaction forward without that tax clearance. Um, so um, we're still at an early stage and I'm assuming you'll have that uh, resolved later on um, when this uh, goes to full CPC or goes to uh, the city council. Um, but I just wanted to note that that, that issue is outstanding and, and we may be at a point where we can't move forward if that can't be resolved. Um. Yes, I just I just received the, the well, we bought it. It had those taxes on it. So that I, I, it wasn't anything we didn't pay. We we did buy it knowing it had the back taxes on it. And I did reach out to um, the the department that handles that with the, the back taxes. And I think it was yesterday and they emailed me the total amount due. So um, I we have we're going to get that paid before the end of this month. That'll be paid in full. Um, great. And uh, I have a question for DPW. Um, where, where does this stand as far as DPW is concerned? Um, we would probably have to re review this further um, with uh, knowing the question. Okay, I have trouble hearing you. Could we you say that sure. again? Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, we will have to uh, review this further with uh, the director, things like this. Okay, that's it. Neither confirm or deny that, that it's already built or I haven't been out there, so I don't know. Uh, I haven't worked with this one. Uh, I would have to ask Lewis or the director. Okay. Well, then Paul and I are going to fuss at you offline. Okay. okay. This um, is the Joyce from Sewage and Water Board. Hey, um, there is utilities, sewer water. You know, um, in that location, there is, a, look, according to the survey, there are um, servitudes. So, those have to stay in place.
yep, that's fine. And and still, well, it's a street. It's going to be a through street or something. So it's it's a roadway. It's just going to be a dead end that provides access to these four lots. Oh, okay. What is a continuing like a street or something to the four lots or? Yes, it's continuing Mark Drive into the four lots and then it dead ends at the at the canal. The reason they had the servitudes originally was to access the canal. Amy, what is the what is the status of the street construction? Um, I haven't been out there in a couple of weeks, but last time I went, they, it was actually formed up with the rebar in place where they were actually getting ready to pour the street back there. So that was maybe that, that was probably about a month ago. Um, so I haven't I haven't driven by there recently, so I'm not exactly sure the status, but I know um, they were getting ready to pour the streets and, and put the curbs in last time I, I was out there. All right. Thank you. And. And Rachel, is the, the subdivision status is tentative approval subject to um, the streets being accepted by the city, et cetera? Correct. And I also just want to make a note that this survey is an old survey. The survey that um, we are looking at to approve doesn't start, the, the lots start where the the new proposed um, city right of way would begin, if that makes sense. So right now it's showing that the uh, that Mark Drive is like subsumed into the lots. The new survey has Mark Drive as, as its own right of way. This is Chica, and I'm sorry if I'm coming late to the party, but I just looked at the 2007 Google view of it and the street was there in 2007. Fully paved. So this isn't a new street that DPW is putting in. We don't know that DPW put that in because it could have been used by Sewage and Water Board to access the canal. It, it oh, appears okay. Point My forward. apologies for coming in late. Thank you. Oh, okay, Jennifer. So um, the server tool was to ac access the canal at this well, location. The 50 foot one, the utility survey, there's a utility server tool as well. That may have been for the actual water and sewer. So either way, I think sewage and water board is fine. Fine with. I think. Oh, we're going to, you know, it'll be, it'll be public right of way and subject to those servitudes for the utilities. Okay. And no permanent structures in there. Correct. Yeah, we have a, a letter from Sewage and Water Board um, with the updated survey where they've basically stated that they're fine with it as long as there aren't any structures built on the servitudes. All right. So uh, at this point, we just wait on construction to com be completed and DPW to to, um, to state that, and then the subdivision can be finalized and the city accept the accept the property donation. Well, we'll forward it to CPC for the regular meeting. Right, for a property acquisition. Yes. Okay. All right. Any um, else? Anyone else has any final comments or questions? Um, just so Joyce, who yeah. um, who was the contact person for sewage and water board on this item? And um, Denise McRae, I believe. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? All right, uh, we'll, we'll move on to our second item. Uh, Amy, we vote on it after the recess. You, you're welcome okay. to stick around. All right. Um, second item is 
a request for an exchange of immovable property with the Housing Authority of New Orleans, Hano, proposing that the City of New Orleans transfer LaSalle Street between Gallier Street and Alvar Street, four blocks, to Hano, and Hano, in exchange, transfers to City of New Orleans, Pauline Street, from LaSalle to Florida, to the city in exchange uh, for a monetary sum equal to the remaining fair market value of LaSalle Street located in the third municipal district, Florida Development. Pull up that attachment. Uh, do we have any uh, represent from Hanno here today? Yeah, Mario, Mario Washington is here from Hanno. As well as Gian Jordan. Very good. Um, do you all want to uh, go first and just give a little explanation? Sure, I, I, can, I can take that. Uh, my name is Josh Haston. I work with LDG Multifamily LLC. Uh, we are working with Hanno to redevelop their property. Um, so with this proposal, we are actually asking um, to make sure that this Lawsat Street is dedicated uh, or transferred back to Hano so we can actually build a brand new uh, public greenway uh, that would cut through the redevelopment of the property, uh, as well as the extension of Pauline Street to add back uh, connectivity um, throughout the development and improve the walkability of the community. Uh, so I think we presented to this board or this commission several months ago. Uh, since then, we had ordered an additional survey to um, to actually figure out what were the uh, square footages of the right of way that we were asking for. Additionally, we have requested and or we have ordered and provided uh, an appraisal uh, by one of the approved vendors for appraisals uh, from the city and provided that with. Uh, Ms. Jennifer's office. Uh, and so uh, we kindly ask for your approval so we can continue to move forward and work on the designs uh, and eventual redevelopment of this property. Thank you. Hey, this is Jen. I'm, I'm sorry that we haven't included that survey. Um, I'm trying to see if I can uh, locate I have it. a copy on another screen. If, if you'd allow me to share, I can uh, kind of display that. Uh, yes, hold on a second. Thank you. That was, uh, that was you, Joshua? Yes, sir. Okay, I, I will make you the co-host. I should now have the ability to screen share. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay. So what we are requesting is that we transfer these spots in red uh, from the city and Hano transfers um, this spot in yellow uh, to the city. So there's an exchange there as well as a monetary sum that was uh, determined by the appraisal at fair market value. Um, and then the idea being that we, uh, again, redevelop. So there's a greenway kind of winding through the property here, as well as increasing connectivity uh, so that Pauline can extend all the way to Florida Avenue. Um, as a part of the development, we're also improving the right of way that currently exists in city property by extending Wall Street to Maison Street as well as improving Bartholomew Street from North Dorganois all the way to Florida Avenue. Uh, currently, only a couple of these streets uh, are open and they've been fenced up since the uh, demolition of the, the former housing property. And do all those, uh, all these squares currently exist? Yes, so let's see if I can share another screen. I can show you Google Maps. 
So uh, here's Google Maps. So as you can see right now, um, Gallier Street is open, Congress Street is open, and then Albert Street is open. Um, a lot of the streets are closed off right now with the fence, uh, including the entirety of this square. Uh, and again, most of, of this square as well. So that, uh, that one block extension of Pauline, that's not even a paper street at this time? Correct. So we would dedicate that back to the city. Okay. And you have not submitted for subdivision yet, right? No, sir. But that's, that's the intention. Correct. Okay. Uh, all right. It might be uh, useful to put the, the survey one back up. Okay. And let me know if you need me to zoom in. Um, Josh, could you maybe zoom in on Pauline? Yes, sir. Yes, that's the kind of main point of today. Um, uh, as you mentioned, we had previously considered the, the potential disposition of Lofsat, um, but we had to bring this back to uh, incorporate the uh, exchange for a portion of Pauline. Um, so what this committee is being asked today to look at is, is whether or not, um, there's any objection to the acquisition of this block of Pauline. So it looks like it would, uh, help with connectivity. And I, would it be the case also that, um, the squares themselves, um, they don't need to be re-subdivided into lots. This will all be um, rentals, essentially. Yes, sir. I have a question. Are we talking about development square 11474 and 1473, or is it just the street we're talking about? So uh, when you go back. On, on Pauline. So yes, they, they will all be developed. We've got a concept plan, let me share that as well. I believe it was within the meeting notes here, but um, so this is the, this section right here. If you can see my cursor is where Pauline Street would be extended. And so we would be developing on either side of Pauline Street, the extension okay. of Pauline Street. Okay, could you go back to your survey? Yes, ma'am. Looks like so, there was sewage and water board servitudes are shown there on Pauline. Could right. We... So how are you, I mean, we can't, how are you talking about developing? I see we have um, servitudes in that area with utilities. So I guess I would suggest that we uh, move those as, as we're redeveloping the property, if that would be possible. So what was here recently or previously, I should say? This was the Florida projects that were destroyed during Katrina. And then uh, I guess most recently, Hanno tried to redevelop a, a portion of the property um, that was then destroyed by a later hurricane. Okay. Would that servitude have been built over previously? Uh, that I do not know the answer to. Um, you can kind of see where the buildings used to be uh, based on where the parking was. Um, so I don't know off the top of my head and maybe Mario or Gian could chime in to figure out. Uh, I don't know exactly what this lot looked like. Square 174B1 and, um, I'm sorry, 1474B1. Uh, and 1473B. 
Yeah, no, I don't have that information. I would have to go back and look at that myself. This has been, been, been vacant now for uh, quite some time. Okay, do y'all know if the servitude is, is still in place or that's what, so I would have to um, further review this because I, I didn't know that part was in consideration in it. I, I would imagine it is that we commissioned this survey uh, as a couple months ago. So unless our surveyor is looking at old inaccurate documents, I imagine it is still in existence. Would you be prepared to create a new servitude running in the public right away? Absolutely. Yeah, so, but Paul, it looks like it was underneath the two buildings, right? I mean, let's let's just speculate that the buildings were in each square. Um, you know it's looking like the water and sewer are there and need to be capped and relocated if you want to build over it. But if you're just doing parking over it, you might not need to do that. Isn't, isn't that what your proposal shows there? Uh, so I don't know the exact location of the buildings on top of the servitude. I, at least a, court, a portion of this we would be building over top of with a building. Okay, okay. I'm not, I'm not sure about this section. Uh, my colleague just shared an image with me um, from when was that? 1985. 1985, and I'm going to see if I can pull it up. These are 95 or 85. Okay. Let's see. Where's that screen? So it appears that this is where Pauline Street is. Let me zoom in if I can. Can't do that. But it looks like this is Pauline Street. Mm -hmm. So it started to probably went underneath those buildings, like you just said. And I'm sorry, we don't have a better image. Well, I don't want to speak for LaJoyce, but I think what she's trying to say is that, you know, normally we would not want any permanent structures over the utilities because then it makes it difficult to access them for repairs. So is you're proposing that you would cap and relocate them somewhere where they could be accessed, whether that's under Pauline or elsewhere? Yes, ma'am. Pauline okay. or, or under the Greenway uh, that we're proposing to replace Lost App. It well, seemed like those utilities probably was just serving maybe the buildings or something. So um, I guess if I guess sewage and water board can uh, further review or if you have a, a once you come up with a your your proposal, you can um, take a look at where I guess you would like your new connections to be. Right when they do the yeah. uh, resubdivision that would create Pauline Street, they will be turning in uh, a survey that shows those two squares and Pauline Street and any servitude that's on it. So you will have you will have a chance to review it at that time as well. Um, as a part of our proposal, we were already expecting to, uh, because of the old infrastructure, I mean, for all we know, there could be lead pipes that serve these old properties. So we were fully expecting to completely replace all the infrastructure within the property. Um, so you would have all brand new infrastructure for the city. Okay. So I guess it'd be before you do the resubdivision plan, it'd be useful to, you know, put on there, you know, servitude to be revoked and propose new servitude. We can certainly do that during our reset plan. Uh, 
Josh, I think since it was a recorded servitude, we're going to have to work with council at Sewage and Water Board to do a revocation of that if that's what is needed. But we can certainly make that connection outside of this meeting. Okay. Thank you. I have another question on um, towards um, was it La Lasetta and Congress? There's another servitude that goes through um, Lasetta. Can you pull up the survey again? Yes, ma'am. Which which stream? In red. Um, I think you had it. Okay. Um, on the set, there's a, a servitude to the left of Congress. So that one, um, yes, the servitude goes through the set. So that servitude um, would have to stay in place with um, no permanent structures in that location. There's a sewer force man that goes through there and, and it's shown on the um, survey right here. I'm sorry, just so I can understand, are you, this entire section? Yes. We well, see goes through Lasette Street. Or well, however you pronounce the name of the street. Would it be possible to relocate so that it's following Congress? Um uh, a sewer force man? Um sorry, I don't I don't understand a lot of those infrastructure terms. A sewer force man, that's a man of uh, sewer, it's just not like your eight inch sewer that's in the road. So that portion over um, the set probably, that would have to remain in place, but you're not showing the, the servitude the, through the street. This, this section, I'm sorry? Yes. Okay, so th this would remain in place. Yes. No, no buildings there, but we could right. build here is what you're saying? No, you can't build there either. Okay. And that's a sewer force man. So that's that's a big uh, sewer. So it's not like your regular eight inch sewer that just probably goes through the street. This is a, a man, uh, a, yeah, a man, a sewer man. So this is your main, this is Mario. So this is your, what you're speaking of is the main, the sewer main, right? Yes, the sewer main that goes through this property right here. And and because of the main is there, then no structure because of the weight probably of the structure can be um, centered over it or anywhere by it because you definitely would have to have it moved if you put a structure there because you're gonna have to drive pilings, et cetera. Is that sort of the concept of why we why that would have to stay in place because I, I know it's large and it, it's not an eight eight inch uh, um, pipe that typically you will see kind of closer to uh, the street side of things. So um, Joshua, I guess, how will you guys uh, allocate your, allocate this site if you can't do anything over this main here? Um, it, looks like it's on both, it looks like it's on both sides of, of square 1476 and um, so we would have to have our A and B. Here's look at that, Mario. Uh, I imagine uh, we can probably, because um, I know we agreed to a certain amount of units with Hannah, so we can probably relocate some of the units uh, to another square and, and make sure that uh, that total density is, is accounted for and made up for. Yeah, we want to be able to relocate a 20 inch, um, probably 20 inch sewer force main. And that's a 20 inch compared to an eight inch. And that ties into, um, was it Florida? What's North? Florida Avenue? Mm -hmm. It ties into a 72 inch sewer force main. So. On the bright side, it means we know there's sewer capacity. <laughs> Um, usually don't really tap into a 20 inch sewer force main probably would tap into your there's sewer in the street. Up oh, and also look like 
portions of north of Lasette Street, the sewer doesn't extend through the whole street. So I guess um, may have to do some extensions on the sewer within the street. Because I, I think, unless, did you pick, did they pick that up in your survey? Um, your guess would be as good as mine. My guess is that the survey is accurate. And Okay, so that's something else to look at. It looks like there is water on Congress Independence, but no water on Parlene or Sewer. So. so that's some other things to consider. So you're planning well, on developing on Pauline, right? Uh, we would extend Pauline Street. So this would just be a, a brand new right of way for the city that would be dedicated back. And you're developing 1475 and 1474. 14, uh, 1475, yes. To the north, I'm sorry. It's, it's yeah. Yes, ma'am, we'd be developing that. I don't know, it looked like your survey does so sewer on independence. But yeah, that's that's also some things to consider whether there is existing or sewer or water in the street, because then you probably there would the developer probably would have to um you know, con con decide how to um, service those properties. Maybe you have to put some new sewer and water in the main streets. And also, yeah, consider that 20 inch sewer force main that runs through the property to the left of Congress. So no permanent structures are to be built and that sewer um, servitude needs to remain in place. That's a 10 foot servitude. And the reason why too, if there's need any maintenance that needs to be done to the sewer um, force main, we have that 10 foot servitude. And in order to do any maintenance or any replacement just of the sewer force main. Gotcha. So we can just to, so I understand and can communicate to our engineers. What you're saying is this darker hashed line, we can't build anything to the east of it. Oh, within the um, servitude, the 20 foot sewer force main servitude. Correct. So the whole entire servitude is this span. And so we could still develop this portion. Yes. But just not anything touching it. And can we pave over the servitude? Um, we usually say no permanent structures to be built within the servitude. Okay, so just just no buildings, but we can pay. What it's saying, a, a, I have 20, but this, I see a 20, oh, it's a 20 sewer force main with a 28 feet wide servitude. I'm looking at you. Josh, it's if you pave, um, you know, if you have a driveway access point or something to that building, you just have to be aware that anytime the sewage and water board needs to conduct repairs on that force main or if something happens, like there'll bear no cost or responsibility for, you know, digging it up or repaving. Gotcha. So we can just put this one on the further review for sewage and water board. Thank you, LaJoyce. So whenever we get some more details about um, the development of the um, project. Yep. Yeah. It sounds like you may want to plan around the sewage and water board facilities to some extent. But then uh, the servitude that goes through the properties of 1474 and 1475, that 
that seemed like that was just serving, serving maybe what was there before. So like Jennifer said, that probably can be revoked, but we still would have to take a, a look at it more in detail. Gotcha. Um, any, any comments from uh, Department of Public Works? Hey, um, so there's no piping or utilities from Public Works. So um, we, uh, we approve. Or subject to further review, of course. No objection. Especially for the new block of Pauline Street. Yeah. <laughs> Um, parks and Parkways, any comments? Why no? That's unusual. Do you want them to have trees? I would love for them to have trees. You have trees, no worries there. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, any, um, any other comments or questions from the committee members? Hey, uh, Chris, GIS, uh, quick question for Jennifer probably. Um, I noticed they have squares for the rights of way. Um, is, I don't know that we do that anywhere else in the city. Is that, uh, does that have to happen? I don't know what you're talking about. Where do they have squares for rights of way? I'm looking at the survey here. So there's square 1473C, 1474C. Um, oh, in yeah. the red. That may have been what was, uh, that's the first time I'm seeing that. I don't think that that actually exists yet, right, Josh? That's your potential proposal for the subdivision? Yes, correct. So we wouldn't, uh, Chris makes a good point. We wouldn't accept this as the the survey for that. We would um, show it, have it be shown as private uh, or shown as lost until the donation is complete, and then then it could be shown as as private. Okay, we we can do that. So, uh, um, and is it possible uh, to give the squares their own unique numbers rather than the A's and B's and the dashes? We, we will do whatever you guys say. So. <laughs> um, I mean, we'll further review that uh, when we get the subdivision. Yeah, you know, I, mean, usually, I don't know. I don't know what's what's there right now versus you yeah. know. But we'll make some recommendations when you submit it as a subdivision plan. But yeah, typically we would we would not uh, if if it could be uh, returning to the original numbering. That would be helpful. If it's changing in dimensions, though, it would have to change name. Yeah, I, I, I have not reviewed whether it's changing in dimensions or not. We'll, we'll have to take a look at that. I mean, this is the first time that I've seen this document. Yeah, yeah. so for everyone, that usually the surveyor proposes lot and square numbers and then and that gets reviewed as part of the resubdivision process. And my only last comment was um, if the current plans go forward or if you decide to put in like a walkway like you have, like a greenway, you might want to consider giving it some type of name uh, because we have had to uh, address things in the past to sidewalks and to uh, bike lanes, things like that. So I know this is a pretty long uh, greenway you have going on there. You might want to give it a name and stick it in the plans. That way we can uh, look at the name, make sure it's cool, insert it into the uh, network. That way uh, safety and permits could use it, and 911 as well, could use it to, uh, to, uh, for addressing the interior portions. I do. And um, I, I think we would definitely change the name. I think uh, Wallstat doesn't necessarily have the best historical uh, name with it, so uh, we, can, we can reach out for better names.
Well, there is a, yes, a plethora of potential people to honor with names. Agreed. We can call it Chris Ard. <laughs> but not Memorial. <laughs> <laughs> and no dashes, please. <laughs> All right, uh, anyone else have any final comments or questions? This is Gian with Hanno. I, I just want to make sure I, uh, I have all of this correctly. So the, this, the main line that's to the right of, to the left of Congress, you guys are going to review that further to make sure whatever needs to be reviewed there. And he cannot build any other structures on that, but he can still do concrete over it, right? Was that what I was hearing? That sounds right to me. Okay, and then we can definitely do a revocation for square 1474 and 1473. That's gonna go away through some formal process. I mean, subject to further review by uh, sewage and water board um, okay. legal team, but like, Further review is needed. I mean, it seems like if that was only to serve the buildings, as LaJoy said, you know, it mm -hmm. seems likely that that could be the path, but, you know, it wouldn't be either of our decisions. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure I was clear on it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments before we move on to the next item? Yes. And I did state that any utility is, um, mean probably will have to be um at the owner's expense any new within the um especially i'm looking at pauline street because that's no utilities in the street right now correct yeah we, we were planning to Curb and gutter that, so it, it, it'll we would we would pay for that infrastructure. Oh well, maybe they didn't have utilities in the street. Maybe because that servitude that went through there, you know. I'm just looking at it right now. Okay, further review by the sewage and water board. Okay. All right. Can I move on to the next one. Uh, uh, Josh and Mario and uh, John, we uh, uh, we're going to vote after we complete the uh, agenda. So you can stick around, or I can just let you know. I'll stick around. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, next item is consideration of a request for the sale of an unconstructed portion of the North Fillory Street right-of-way located in the third municipal district bisecting squares 589 and 540 between Japonica Street and former Manuel Street. The unconstructed portion is adjacent to the municipal address of 1333 Japonica. And uh, Ava, should I open the item that you emailed me this morning? Yes, please. You can open that. That was, um, I'm sorry, I have a feedback. That was sent to us um, by the applicant. It's a survey. Okay, that's the best one to, to start off with. Uh, let's see. I think so. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, I killed my feedback. There you go. Yeah, we um, received, there you go. It's right there. Uh, uh, See. Can someone say where the unconstructed the, uh, is it's the this? left side of this document? This is Sam Levin uh, purchasing these this parcel here. Uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, yeah. Is it marked somehow on here? Uh, it's not. It's basically the whole kind of left side. You'll see North Villary Street written. Yep, right there. So that that entire street is oh, okay. uh, what's so in question currently. It's the part labeled North Gallery Street. Okay. 
Uh, that helps. Uh, and this is unconstructed, like you say, or is, like it says in the end. It's somewhat constructed. I'm not sure of the exact definition. Um, well, but there, yeah. I'm sorry, Sam. Uh, yeah. It did look like there were utilities in there. That's why I kind of wanted to share the survey today so that uh, 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 the folks at uh, DPW and Sewage and Water Board could, could see that because um, sometimes it may or may not be showing up on their records. Um, uh, Uh, this is DPW. There are utilities on this street. Um, so at most, we uh, we need to serve it to. I think it's important to note also this, uh, this street has been leased from the city um, by a couple of different owners since 2001. So the street is not currently uh, public, so to speak, in terms of access. It's been leased to the adjacent property owner. Uh, up in so we are purchasing the the block to the 1333 Japonica um, from the property owner on the left. Uh, since 2001, they've been owned by the same owner, uh, so it's basically been one giant parcel. Uh, but that owner is now selling half of it, so uh, the street will no longer be kind of a connector between two halves owned by the same person, and instead will be uh, you know, between two two different owners at this point. All right. <clears throat> and am I am I correct that the the right of way would be between the two solid lines, two bolt solid bold lines? That's correct. All right. And so we show a uh, four foot by two feet nine inch brick sewer with the dotted line. Uh, that's what you were referring to, Sewage and Water Board? Uh, well, I haven't okay. seen anything yet, but I am going to refer to it. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant, I meant, <laughs> but, to, say, um, I meant okay. to say public works. Sorry. <laughs> well, anyway, Sewage and Water Board. Um, so what are you planning? What are the plans for this location? Um, we're more just trying to figure out, I guess, uh, how to move forward in terms of of it being separate owners now. Um, so what we don't want is for the lease to remain uh, with the current owner, um, giving them complete control of the street. So um, in our previous conversations, uh, we talked about either taking over the lease, uh, eliminating the lease and having the city take this back as a public street. Um, and that's when the idea of purchasing the street also came up. Um, so we're kind of open to some different options, but I just need you to know, understand what what the possibilities are from your guys' perspective. What you know, are we able to purchase it? Are you know what happens if the city if we cancel the lease? Uh, is that even an option? You know, just kind of some of the mechanics of the different options is just, uh, kind of where we're at. Well, um, thank you, Mark. Oh, oh, sorry, you, you, you can go. No, I'm sorry. I I think no matter what option of those options we're talking about, uh, the utilities are relevant in that yeah. um, if they're present, we can't have permanent structures over them unless we're going to uh, have a possibility of removing. Um, so that's kind of what we're trying to figure out here. But either way, you can't build over it um, unless there's another path. Sure. So go ahead, LaJoyce. Well, um, Sewage and water is going to have to object to a sale because that's some uh, nice size um, sewer that goes through there. Okay. And it goes to south and um, it connects to that sewer that goes to the pumps. I think that there's a pump station over there. So we would have to object to a sale. Would you object? even if there was a servitude in your favor with no permanent structures? I sewage and water board objects to the sale. Okay. Well, that's one possibility. <laughs> I 
And just to give a little more context, to, to the north is Manuel Street. Also, that is a truly unconstructed street. Um, it's along the railroad and is just gravel from our property line to the railroad itself. I think mean, there was some uh, discussion as to how much servitude the railroad had there or, or if the railroad maybe even potentially owned that land. Um, I think we have uh, 45 feet from center of track to our property line. Yeah. Um, so this is Jen. We'll, we'll have to have a, a separate conversation with the new railroad commission um, okay. to kind of get an idea of the boundaries. Like we've currently mm -hmm. been kind of working through some of those issues because as part of a transaction in 2018, they were given a servitude, um, you know, but how far that extends here, I'm not sure. So we kind of want to, uh, touch base with them so we can we can do that separately i understand you know what what your concern is with that space it's certainly sure. underutilized and um but uh we've got to understand what their position is since they would be impacted if it, if it was leased they would be impacted by that mm -hmm. okay so but we can we can take that to a different forum sure All right, does anyone else uh, have any comments or questions? Yeah. DPW, I, I kind of I missed your comment from before. If you might be able to restate it. Oh, yeah, uh, we have utilities, so we would be back to detail, but um, you know, servitude is more um, appropriate in the situation. You would object to sale? All right. Um, anyone else? Any questions or comments from members? Kai, would you be willing to follow up and see if there are any potential plans that would involve North Villery construction? Uh, yes. Okay, I'll follow up with you on that. Okay. Anyone else have any questions or comments before we move on? Okay. Next, I hear someone. Just saying thanks. Oh, thank you, Sam. All right, next we are going to go to street name change uh, 321, consideration of the renaming of the entirety of McShane Place, which connects North Rampart Street at St. Bernard to St. Claude Avenue as Joseph Guillaume Place. Uh, just a moment, I will pull up a map. All right, and for a little background on this, um, <clears throat> uh, Council Member Palmer made this request, uh, which is the normal procedure is for them to make the request to City Planning Commission. We follow some procedures of notice, and uh, normally we would also be scheduling this with the PAC uh, for their comments and going through a set of criteria. So, but we were asked to expedite this one. So it's actually gone to the City Planning Commission for consideration yesterday. And the City Planning Commission suspended their rules to consider it uh, and accepted the staff's recommendation to uh, modified approval to rename, rename this two block section as St. Claude Avenue. Um, Apparently, St. Claude Avenue is named after Claude Tremay, who is a bad person. 
but the Street Renaming Commission did not propose renaming St. Claude Avenue. So um, I know City Planning Commission and I'm sure Chris Arda have always hated uh, the idea of this two block portion being a different name. Um, it's already confusing because you, if you are on Rampart Street diving down river, uh, you merge into St. You merge really into St. Claude Avenue rather than the North Rampart that juts off into the more neighborhood uh, scale portion of Maroney. Uh, <clears throat> and so the planning commission did accept the staff's recommenda recommendation to rename uh, this two block section as St. Claude Avenue. But um, being that Council Mayor Palmer made the request, it is likely that she will not accept the staff's recommend or the commission's recommendation. So we would like to get your uh, comments on the proposal of Joseph Guillaume Place. And this is primarily directed to Department of Public Works, 911 and IT Chris Ard. I think we saw Catherine Cargo and John Adams join the meeting. Right. Hey, how are you, Paul? This is Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Um, uh, I would agree with the City Planning Commission's recommendation to rename this two block stretch uh, St. Claude Avenue. Um, not really sure about the historical significance. All I know is that it's two blocks in the middle of two previously named streets and it's uh, it it's it's uh, not a good addressing practice to have the same street renamed multiple times. So the fewer names we have along this stretch of road, the better. That would be nine one one's recommendation. I do have a question. I haven't looked at this, but um, Chris, you may know are the block ranges of this Max Shane, do they correspond to St. Claude or there's no variation in the addressing, is there? Uh, not too much. It looks like Rampart goes to the 1400 block up to uh, Kellerex Street. And then once it crosses Kellerex Street going down river, it jumps to the 1700 block and continues through um, uh, correctly all the way into St. Claude. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, Chris, do you want to weigh in officially? Hey, Catherine taught me everything I know, so I go with what Catherine says. <laughs> All right, this is DPW. Um, there is no uh, objection to this. However, Paul, you might uh, help me out and uh, let me know who pays for this. I mean, this come from the council. Um, I'm, I guess I'm assuming that they've gone through uh, traffic engineering to see that there are fees for these kind of things. You mean for like new street signs? Yeah, just for, yeah, all of that. So um, with this, you know, our rules are kind of set up for that, for street signs to be paid for by a third party. Uh, when so the third party is making the request to the city through the respective council member, but this is part of the street renaming commission. So really the, the city should be providing the funds for the street sign changes. Okay, I'm trying to be sorry. Uh, so I'm not touching them. Okay, I mean, I would, um, I don't know if this came up during budget hearings at all, uh, but you, you might want to reach out to the city council, uh, you know, and if you do have any concerns about the ability to pay for this, and because this is this one's nothing. Um, uh, um, Robert E. Lee is a lot longer, and that's the one we're talking about next. All right. Um, John Adams or George Washington. Uh, you have. A, I see your hand is raised.
There you go. Hi. Sorry, I was having a problem with my microphone, so I'm over at Catherine's computer. I was looking at the address ranges on McShane. Uh, there's a today's Cajun seafood right there in the corner. It is 1700 McShane. If you change that um, to say Claude, you have to readdress a few things on that block because closer to Esplanade, there's already a 1724 and this and that and the other. Does that make sense? So there are, there are, so the, there would the, yeah, be duplicate addresses. Yeah, there's, there's a 1700 to 1728 North Rampart coming up to St. Bernard. And that little bit of McShane starts at 1700. And so there would be uh, addresses out of order. Let me, uh, let me pull up the property viewer. Say that again, Paul. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to pull up the property viewer. All right. Isn't it just one address that would have to be changed? Is it just one address? Um, let me check. He's checking. It's a good thing we work close to, e to each other. Uh, at least three. Uh, like, he isn't says it already? It looks, like, it looks like three addresses would need to be changed. Or, well, it could be, could be one if you adjusted it. it it's uh, the only one that looks like it would really have to change, if y'all can hear me, is today's Cajun seafood. Yeah, it looks like it's already bad. So, so, so we could, <laughs> if that one was changed, the, the other ones above it are like 30, 24 and 34. Uh, well, maybe two addresses then, because there's a 24 in the previous block y'all can see in that parcel data down there. Um, so yeah, uh, think of two or three addresses on that side changing. I haven't looked on the other side yet. So uh, your point is that there's on this block between Kerlerac and St. Bernard, we've got 1700. Yeah, low 1700s. And then there's on the next block, which is now McShane, there are low 1700s. Okay. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but is that not Rampart Street 1700? And then, so it would be distinct. Yeah, see, this is Rampart. Right, right. But it's, yeah, the, the seafood place is ramp is addressed to Rampart. Um, but what about you know, for example, on the odd side of the street? Okay, yeah. So sorry. Uh, you but could, you could have a seventeen hundred block of Saint Claude there. Uh, I'll look on, on our date on the other side. Oh yeah, because this is Rampart, and then right. Saint Claude. Although the numbers would kind of like not be going up when you got to. Right, it would like repeat. But it'd be a different street name. Yeah, but Catherine, still, it's not very intuitive. Catherine is, is correct. You would have two 1700 blocks, one of Rampart and one of St. Claude. Even though it's... And that's not, that's not great. Um, but usually when we have name changes crossing a street, the address range continues. Yeah. So that, that's, that's a little messy. But that's the way, way it is now as well. But it's... Yeah, yes. yes. Yes, that's true. And it's we might since since it looks like there may be some room, uh, we might could extend the seventeen. It looks like the last address on uh, Rampart is seventeen sixty, so we could go from seventeen twenty four to seventeen starting on the even side seventeen. 70 to 70 to 1799 for that stretch of St. Claude. You know what I mean? It would be, it would be like an extension of the 1700 block, but the street name would change and we just wouldn't repeat the addresses. We would start them at 1770 or something higher than 1760, which is where Rampart ends or at, at the corner of St. Anthony and Rampart. Y'all understand what I mean? You could still keep it the 1700 block of St. Claude. However, just in order to avoid confusion with the Rampart veer off there, um, the bearing right there, just go higher than the Rampart ends. Rampart ends at 1760 start start the the um, 
St. Claude address at 1770 and then take it to 1779. And then you cross St. Anthony and it starts with 1800. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's a possibility. And what it, it would just be two, three addresses, yeah, maybe things. four. How would that happen that the uh, individual's address addresses get changed? Aneda, uh, Allison, and safety and permits would send them a letter telling them that their address was changing. And it would be changed. She'd be sending them a letter anyway because their street name's going to change. It's Allison's last name? Aneda Allison is her last name. Aneda. Okay. I have heard of her. In safety and permits, addressing. Yeah. But is it, would I be correct to say that it would, even, even without the change of numbers, it's no worse than the current situation? Correct. I mean, it, it could stay the way it is. It's, you won't have any repeating addresses on the block. However, it, it'll be a little wonky, kind of out of order, but, and you know, if we get good street signs right there, <laughs> it doesn't make it, doesn't make a difference. Interesting, okay. You'd have 1734 looks like it repeats. Or is that ramp, North Rampart? 1734 in the little corner. Um, 1734. That would be on North Rampart. Yeah, they would repeat. Oh, they would repeat. I'm sorry. Okay, so there is a repeat there. You're right. So yeah. Uh, I was so I would suggest just uh, extending the range starting at 1770, just as a, a number to pick. I mean, it can be it can seven, be it could be a little bit lower. It could be 1766 or 1764. It has to be even for that side that we're talking about. And then the, the, the rampart side of that block would be odd. So we won't have to worry about that. Clear as mud. <laughs> but let's see. wouldn't the uh, what so this this is 1734 rampart. What's the other 1734? Is are we talking here? Seven, yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. Okay. That one. But that would be 1734 St. Claude. Correct. That's true. If it That's was true. if it had an address on that side. That is true. But it's actually, I mean, it looks like they use the address on, on Rampart. Yeah, if, I, if I can say, um, if we can let Aneda handle with, uh, she always works with John and, uh, and Catherine with the addressing ranges. But for this point, if you bring up the addressing uh, confusion right here, it might muddle down the issue of the street name, um, which is what we're trying to uh, prevent right now. Right. That makes sense. Right, and I can't really give, uh, you know, I, I can't give the advice on behalf of the planning commission, but I can give the advice based on the planning advisory committee. So, yeah, yeah we like the street name change. We don't, we'll, we'll deal with the addressing issues after. It's not, yeah. it's not a showstopper by any means. I mean, does this council even need to get involved what? in that? The city in council? The, in the, yeah. No. The in the readdressing? No. Okay. No. Then it'd probably be better not to bring it up. Okay, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, everyone okay if I move on to the next one? Uh, yes. Next one is consideration of the renaming of the entirety of Robert E. Lee Boulevard from Peoples Avenue to Lakeshore Drive, West End Boulevard as Allen Toussaint Boulevard. 
So this is the same situation as um, McShane in terms of the expedited review by City Planning Commission. Um, City Planning Commission considered it yesterday and uh, accepted the staff's advice uh, to rename it, it as Tucson Boulevard because we already have an Allen Street and uh, yesterday, they also recommended um, a Red Allen Way in slide L. So we wanted to have one less Allen in the database if we could. Uh, and I the Planning Commission did accept that advice. So <clears throat> this would go from uh, the whole length of Robertly from Peoples here to West End and Lake Shore Drive here it would not affect West Robert E. Lee here because that wasn't part of the request. Plus, um, you know, Chris and I felt strongly that we, we definitely don't want it to have the same name as uh, Robert E. Lee or Toussaint Boulevard, whichever it ends up being, um, because it's really, you go really go out of Lake New, New Orleans Hammond Highway and then it would veer off into it seem like what seems like a entirely different street with an entirely different character on West Robert E. Lee. Uh, we did explore with uh, the council member's office the possibility of renaming New Orleans Hammond Highway to be the same as Toussaint, but uh, the ad there was an addressing situation there that. Uh, made that a uh, untenable idea. <gasps> Someone sounds very bored. Um, I'd like to. We uh, nine one one has a question, Paul. Well, well, I think you all answered my question. That was about West Robert E. Lee. So you guys are going to maybe consider giving it a different. Uh, name right well it really wasn't part of the request so uh it would it would stay the same until such time as uh someone else proposes uh, a street name change for it okay um and and i know you haven't called for it but we have no objection to this name change at 911 okay can i say that you prefer not having the allen no, uh, you can. Um, uh, we want or can you, or is, is it not that big a deal? No, so it's not that big a deal. And people know him by his full name anyway. Right. I mean, yeah, it would be better if it was Toussaint, but that's not a problem. I, it's Allen Toussaint Boulevard, I think. What's been a little bit of an issue with us sometimes are these names with you know, Reverend Robert C. Blake's Jr. Way. Yes, um, we, we hate it. And, and, and Chris, is, is Chris is, I'm sure, chimed in about that. We like to avoid uh, too many names, too many words in the name, and um, and if possible, uh, no no um, abbreviated middle names. But that's that's the way it is, so we'll, we'll deal with it. Yeah, well, at least we're not getting a middle initial with Alan Toussaint. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Chris, you and I have talked about it plenty, but do you want to say anything else? I no, I defer to 911. They know what they're doing. Um, I still think there's another Allen in there, but like it's not a big deal though. All right. And um, DPW? Um, no objection. I think 15 is in characters in the name is our. Um, or it starts to get hairy, but this one's 14. So. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the uh, last part. But yeah, it, 15 is when uh, it, it's kind of hairy and I see to make the signs, but this one is 14 characters. So um, yeah, we don't we don't check, by the way. Okay, no objection. Anyone else have anything they'd like to say about the street name change? Hearing none, uh, the last item, and um, 
Catherine and John and Chris, you don't have to stick around if you don't want to. Um, last item is consideration of the schedule for 2022. Jennifer has usurped some of my dates proposed with her new committee, I understand. The PC participated in the vote and didn't know that that was the case. I'm, of course, happy to, we can, we can move it around however you want to coordinate. I'm not married to any dates in particular, and we can always vote again. We just wanted to at least get January on the calendar. So yeah, um, we uh, want to modify, you and I can talk about that. Um, you know, I don't, we, let, me, we uh, let me pull it up for a second um, first. Paul, did you give us a list of things, of dates? Uh, I think I attached it to the Outlook invitation, but it was an update. So you, sh you should have got an update with it. Okay. But maybe we'll, we might end up just talking about January and then uh, coming back and doing it the next time. Um, so um, these are the, the proposed dates. We choose them to coincide with our designing it, design advisory committee. Um, looks like it is generally the third Wednesday, although sometimes there are adjustments made uh, depending on what's going on in, in that month. <clears throat> uh, Tracy was uh, shared with me the, the con potential conflict days were February 16, April 20, May 18, September 21, and October 19 with um, the encroachments committee. So if you'd like, maybe what we could do is just adopt January 19th for our first one. And then uh, at that meeting, we can propose a new schedule or reconsider this schedule. That sounds like a plan. Um, you think we'll have stuff we for- We're holding that as a second date, um, you know, as needed. So we could, I think we can um, work out a mutually agreeable solution offline. Let's just agree on the January date. Okay. So um, everybody okay with January 19th for our next PAC meeting date? Yep. All right. And um, Jen, what do you think we will have some items for that date? You usually have something in the hopper. Ava would know. <laughs> All right. I keep looking for the unmoved January 5th, January, January 19th. Oh, Jan that's after something. Now, I can't off my, off the top of my head. I can't think of anything January 19th. Well, I mean, uh, it, do you, uh, do you have any sort of, um, property disposition requests that are bubbling up? At oh, this so time? far? No, yeah. uh, no. Okay. The last one I had was Miss Scandalino. Okay. Yeah. It may be quiet because of the holidays. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so. I thought you meant, I'm sorry. I was, I thought you meant like, is there like a parade or something? That day? <laughs> and I'm, oh. I'm like, no, not that I can think of. <laughs> yeah, we got to take parades into consideration too. All right. Uh, all right. Well, we'll do, now we'll go into our uh, three minute recess and we will come back and vote on the items.
All right, I'm calling the meeting back to order. We have no public comments on any of the items. I'm just gonna really do a quick uh, roll call vote, make sure everybody's still here. Got uh, City Planning Commission here, Real Estate and Records. Here. Department of Public Works. Here. HDLC. Here. Parks and Parkways. Here. Sewage and Water Board. Here. All right. Uh, I think that is all the voting members. Uh, so first item is the consideration of the request by Amy Scandliato to denote, donate a portion of ground to be dedicated to public use as a continuation of Mark Drive located in the third municipal district, Donna Villa subdivision square O bounded by Hickerson Street, Dwyer Road, Hammond Street, and Peralt Walk to the city of New Orleans. Um, I'd like to make a motion of no objection, subject to further review by DPW, Sewage and Water Board, Real Estate and Records, and CPC. All right, that's a motion by- Second. Real Estate and Records, and a second by- HDLC, and that was further review. Could you uh, say them slowly? Further review, DPW, Sewage and Water Board, Real Estate, and CPC. All right, we have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. CPC, yes. Real Estate and Records. Yes. DPW? Yes. HDLC? Yes. Parks and Parkways? Yes. Sewage and Water Board? Yes. And it is unanimous six to zero. Thank you. Uh, next item is request for an exchange of a movable property with the uh, Hanno for proposing that the city of New Orleans transfer LaSotte Street between Gallier and Alvar, four blocks, and Hanno exchange to city of New Orleans, Pauline Street from LaSotte to uh, Florida Avenue to the city, in addition to a monetary sum equal to the remaining fair market value of LaSotte Street. Um, I'd like to make a motion of no objection, subject to further review by Sewage and Water Board, DPW, CPC, and Real Estate. Second. Second. I got D DPW first on the second. Um, and so I could go slowly again, if you could read again who the further review it is by. Sewage and Water Board. DPW, CPC, and real estate. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote, city planning commission, yes. Real estate and records. Yes. DPW. Yes. HDLC. Yeah. Parks and parkways. Tico, are you muted? Asleep at the switch, no objection. Thank you, and sewage and water board. Oh, what, are, what is it? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, this, is, um, this is the Hanna one, uh, so it's no objection, subject to further review by sewage and water board, DPW, CPC, and real estate and records. Yes, no objection. Okay. Uh, next, 
is a request for the sale of an unconstructed portion of the North Villery Street right of way located in the third municipal district by secting squares 589 and 540 between Japonica and former Manuel. Uh, the unconstructed portion is adjacent to 1333 Japonica. I see uh, in my notes, sewage and water board would object to the sale due to the size of the sewer. DPW would object to the, size of the sale as well. I'm going to make my motion and let them object. So motion of no objection, subject to further review by CPC and real estate. Oh. Object. Well, we don't have a second yet. Does anyone want a second oh. that motion? So what is it? I'm sorry. Which uh, motion is for uh, no objection, subject to further review by Sewage and Water Board, DPW, CPC, and Real Estate and Records. Well, Sewage and Water Board object. So if you say no objection, what are we? Well, uh, so. Um, at this point, you just vote no. You're going to vote no on the motion if anyone seconds it. Usually, no. this is Tracy's job, but I'll do it. <laughs> All right. Parks and Parkways seconds. And that's further review. Well, let me write it down. So I'm sorry. So we. So what is the motion? The uh, motion is no objection subject to further review by Sewage and Water Board, DPW, CPC, and Real Estate and Records. So if Sewage yeah. and Water Board has an objection, what's... We're going to roll call and you can vote no. So, so if it passes, but if Sewage and Water Board still object, that's what I'm saying. Well, it would, it would still, I mean, this, this doesn't approve anything. This would um, have to go to um, City Planning Commission for uh, a property disposition. Nope. So what I'm saying, if it's saying a motion of no objection, but sewage and water board has an objection, but say the majority has no objection. So I'm saying, but sewage and water board objects. So it would pass even though sewage and water board objects. Well, we don't to know if it would pass. For sale. That's what that's what I'm trying to figure. That they are for sale. So you're saying you have no objections to a sale, but sewage and water board saying objection to a sale. So if it a sale without with sewage and water board objecting, because you're making a motion. If the motion passed, it's saying no objections to a sale. But the record will so reflect that sewage and water board objected. But still, I mean, if you're saying if it's it, it can still pass even though sewage and water board objects. It could, but it doesn't immediately authorize the sale. But you're but saying see, the only other option would be for me to withdraw my withdraw this item, and I'm tired of withdrawing items that I don't have an objection to. So you can object. But I'm saying that even though sewage and water board object, it could still pass and be a sale. That's what I'm saying. Hopefully, everybody will vote no. I'm just making the motion so that we okay. can get through with the votes. Okay. All right. All right, since I expect a split vote, let's go closely here. Uh, roll call, City Planning Commission, no. Real Estate and Records. No. DPW. Uh, no. HDLC. No. Parks and Parkways. Tika. Yeah. 
Uh, wrong thing. Uh, no. And Sojourn Waterboard. So I'm voting no against it. Okay. So it's unanimous vote against no objection. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. So we were saying no objection? Um, well, LaJoyce, you won. Yes. I won. Okay. Instead of me withdrawing it, we're all voting no. That way it's not all on me as the person who said no. Okay. Okay. Maybe we should uh, should have made the motion for objection, though. Yeah, that's what it's confusing because it's 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 saying it seemed like. I know. What, all right. So next but, time that I know that, that you do object, I'm going to ask LaJoyce to make the motion. That'd be perfect. Okay. So it is an objection to a sale, right? So in City Planning Commission, we would say we needed to do an alternate motion. So I'm going to do that. Just for clarity, will someone give me a motion of ob objection? Joyce? Susan Waterboard objects to a sale. All right, so you're making a motion to, to object. Okay, yes. All right, is it seconded? Come on, somebody. Uh, second. Thank you, DPW. Um, because of our previous vote, I'm just going to do uh, this vote by acclamation. All in favor of the objection, say aye. 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 Chair deems that to be a unanimous vote. Uh, moving on to the consideration of the renaming of the entirety of McShane Place, which connects North Rampart Street at St. Bernard Avenue to St. Claude Avenue as Joseph Guillaume Place. Um, so in this case, my notes would indicate that 911 agrees with the City Planning Commission's recommendation uh, to rename this two block portion as uh, St. Claude Avenue. Uh, IT agreed, DPW seemed to agree. Uh, and then we could pass on information also that uh, Sewage and water, or safety permits should consider uh, changing addresses and address ranges. <clears throat> so, someone like to give me a motion supporting the City Planning Commission recommendation. Might be good if it came from DPW. Okay, uh, motion to, um, I'm sorry, Jen, what do you usually say? Uh, to uh, support the renaming of McShane Place as uh, St. Cloud Avenue. Uh, motion of no. Can I get a second? All right, uh, can I get a second? Second. All right, I'm going to go with real estate records. I heard first. Roll call vote. City Planning Commission, yes. Uh, real estate and records. Yes. DPW. Yes. HDLC. Yes. Parks and Parkways. Yes. Sewage and Water Board. Yeah. Thank you. And next. Um, we have the consideration of renaming the entirety of Robert E. Lee Boulevard from Peoples Avenue to Lakeshore Drive, West End Boulevard, as Allen to Sant Boulevard. Uh, motion of no objection. DW makes a motion of no objection. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, HDLC. Uh, roll call, City Planning Commission, yes. Real Estate and Records. Yes. DPW. Yes. HDLC. Yes. 
parks and parkways. Yes. Sewage and water board. Yes. Thank you. Passes unanimously. And for PAC meeting schedule, uh, I shall do this one by acc acclamation because um, we are only setting the next date for January of January 19th, 2022. And at that time, we'll consider a calendar for the rest of the year. Um, do I have a motion to accept January 19th, 2022 as our next meeting date? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Tracy. I'll second. Thank you for the second, DPW. All in favor say aye. 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 In the chair's view, this is passed unanimously. Uh, and I hereby thank you for your service in the year 2021. Uh, happy holidays and see you all next year. Bye-bye.